Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at something called participation exemption or dividend received deduction. This topic is related to international taxation. We did see dividend received deduction in a separate recording for domestic U.S. corporation. We do have that for domestic and we do have this dividend received deduction for international taxation for companies that we own shares with that are overseas internationally, not U.S. companies, not based in the U.S. Now, we have to understand two type of taxing system that exist. One is called worldwide tax system and the other is called territorial system. So what is a worldwide tax system? It's where a country taxes its residents on their global income regardless of where that income is earned. For example, if we're dealing with the U.S. of A and the US, some resident in, the, in Australia that's a US, a U.S. citizen, they earn some money here. What's going to happen? They have to, it has to be taxed in the U.S. Territorial system basically said, which is the, the current U.S. tax system, you pay taxes on income where it's earned. So if you, if you earn it in Australia, you pay the income, you pay your income taxes there. This means if a taxpayer earns income in a country with the lower taxes, they won't face additional taxes from their home country to top up to the home country's tax rate. Well, that's it. You earned it there, you pay there, and that's all what we care about. Therefore, taxpayers operating in a low tax jurisdiction are taxed at the same rate as local businesses in that jurisdiction, whatever the tax rate happens to be in Australia without facing extra taxes from their home country for bringing that income back. So this is what we're going to be discussing, but specifically in the U.S. we have this dividend received deduction and how does it work. But let's talk first about territorial tax system a little bit more. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So what is a territorial tax system? It's the main way to avoid taxing the same income twice. How do you do this? You could either use participation exemption or a dividend received deduction. What is a participation exemption and what's a dividend received deduction? Well, under participation exemption, this rule lets the taxpayer not pay taxes on foreign income. Simply put, if if a company in one country earns profit through its investment in another country, the home country won't tax it. So participation exemption, they would say, you earn, you, your company earned income in Australia, that income is taxed in Australia, we're done participation exemption. Or we can have the dividend received deduction. This provision allows taxpayers to reduce their taxable income by the amount of dividend income they received from abroad. So let's assume uh, you, one U.S. company owns stocks in another company in Australia and that company paid them a million dollar in dividend. They would report the dividend then they will have a million dollar of a dividend received deduction and they will their taxable income is zero. When a company receives dividend payment from the foreign investment it can deduct those amounts from income reducing the income subject to taxation. So this is how the dividend received deduction works. Let's take a look at a little bit more you know, a little bit more in details. So a corporation can avoid paying U.S. taxes on dividend it receives if it owns at least 10%. So the first rule, if you have to own at least 10%. So if you own 10% of that foreign company, you will get a 100% dividend received deduction. It means you include that money, you include that million dollar, then you will deduct it, you will deduct a million dollar through the DRD. <laughs> means what? It means that million dollar is not counted. So when the dividend sent back to the U.S. from overseas, no additional U.S. taxes are levied on that income because it's a territorial system. You paid in Australia, you bring it back, we'll give you the, D the DRD. Now, why do they give you the DRD? Because they want to know how much you earned, how much you are earning. That's why. Otherwise, if it's participation exemption, you just don't have to report this. But we want you to report it because you might be bringing that money back. So that's why we want to, we want to be aware of it. 
There are additional rules for the DRD you need to be aware of. So to get the 100% dividend received deduction, there are specific conditions and limitation. Right, I mean, we should not be surprised. First, if the US corporation uses 100% of the DRD to exempt foreign dividend, that's fine, that's great. But if you do so, you cannot use any foreign tax credit or any deduction for taxes paid to the foreign government. Because what you're doing here is double dipping if you do both. If you receive the income, um, the income is basically tax free because you were able to use the, D the DRD, then you, then you want to get a foreign tax credit or a deduction for the taxes you paid in Australia. Well, that's double dipping. So essentially, you cannot double dip by getting a deduction for the full amount of the dividend and at the same time claiming a credit or a deduction for foreign taxes paid. Also, there's a holding period requirement. What does that mean? It means you have to hold the stock for a certain amount of time. So the U.S. corporation must have owned the stock of the foreign corporation for more than 365 days within 731 day window. When does the 365 days start? It starts before the dividend X dividend date. What's the X dividend date? The day on which you must own the stock or receive to receive the, the dividend declared. So, so 365 days before the X dividend. Just think of the X dividend when you qualify to get the dividend. And it has to be a window, specific window of 731 days. What's this rule for? This rule is to ensure that you're holding the stock for a substantial amount of time, a long-term investment. You're not just trading the stock, getting the dividend, then selling the stock and getting the deduction. So you are truly making an investment. And if you're making an investment, you have to hold you have to hold it for a substantial amount of time. There are certain income that are excluded from the DRD, from the 100% DRD. What are those income? I'm going to list them now. We're going to cover each one of them separately in a separate recording. For example, subpart F income. Well, this is passive income or income that 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 contains certain anti-avoidance transaction. Those don't qualify for the 100% DRD. So you cannot have passive income and get the DRD. You have to pay taxes on those regardless whether the money is distributed or not. If you have global, if you're subject to the global intangible low taxed income or guilty, this is a category of foreign income that's subject to US taxation on an annual basis to prevent shifting profit to low tax jurisdiction. Just know guilty is not guilty is not subject to the DRD. Now what's guilty? There's a one whole re one whole recording about this. Also, earnings that are considered to be reinvested in the US in the U in US assets by foreign corporation. Simply put, income reinvested in US property, income from foreign corporation. Again, those you cannot take the DRD for them. There's a whole recording about this session. Income subject to something we call the transition tax. What is the transition tax? Again, we have a recording about this. It's a one-time tax imposed on previously untaxed foreign income for U.S. foreign subsidiaries as part to move to the territorial tax system. Remember what we said earlier, the USA is a territorial tax system. Well, that wasn't, that wasn't the case until 2018, 1-1-2018. One, one, so what happened if a company exists, a U.S. affiliate prior to that, and prior to that 1-1-2018, they have, let's assume, 500 million in untaxed earning because they kept it overseas. They did not bring it because they, they didn't want to be taxed because it was a worldwide tax system. So after 1-1-2018, what they say is now what you have to do, you have to bring it back. There is a transition tax. You have to bring it back and you have to pay taxes on it. Now, once you look at the transition tax, you will see you don't have to pay taxes all at once. You'll split the taxes over, I believe, eight years and you will pay the taxes gradually. But this income in any transition tax, you cannot get a DRD for it. Otherwise, that will be great. Then people that hold up and did not pay taxes, they did not move their money back. Now they could move it tax free. That's not possible. This 500 million was untaxed before. It existed before 1-1-2018, before we changed the rules, still subject to the rules. It doesn't qualify for the DRD, just like the other income that we listed on the slide, guilty income invested in U.S. property, foreign income invested in U.S. property, and support of income. Again, there's a recording for each one, each one of those. Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from farhatlectures.com. Which of the following statements 
is accurate about the U.S. territorial tax system approach to foreign dividend income for corporation? Well, they're asking us basically for one correct statement. So what does that mean? We have one correct, three incorrect. Let's start and maybe we could eliminate the incorrect one first. It allows a dividend received deduction only for dividend from domestic corporation. Is this the purpose of the U.S. territorial tax system? No. We do have a dividend received deduction for domestic corporation, but that doesn't describe the U.S. territorial tax system approach to foreign dividend income. It says subject to foreign income dividend. So this is A, is an easy elimination because we do have a DRD for domestic, but that's not what the U.S. territorial tax system help with. It imposes a residual U.S. tax on all repatriated foreign income to match domestic rate. No, we don't, we don't, we don't impose an additional residual tax to match the domestic rate. Whatever you paid over there, we're going to give you 100% exemption for that dividend. Whatever you're bringing in will give you 100% exemption. So you don't have to pay taxes because you paid the taxes over there. You don't have to pay additional taxes. Therefore, B is out. You don't have to pay additional taxes on repatriated foreign income. You don't have to do that to match that of the U.S., it provides a 100% dividend received deduction, so far so good, for certain foreign source dividend if ownership criteria are met. Is that true about the U.S. territorial tax system approach to foreign dividend income? And the answer is yes. We're going to give you a 100% dividend received deduction for your, for your foreign source dividend if you meet certain ownership. I would say C so far is the best choice. I'm going to circle and wait. It requires all foreign income to be immediately included in taxable income regardless of repatriation. No, it doesn't require that. It doesn't require all foreign income to be immediately included, includable in taxable income. It doesn't require that. It does not. You will pay the taxes over there. When you bring the dividend, we're going to give you an exemption. That's that's basically what it is. So D is out. And as, a, as, we, as we predicted, C is the best answer. And it is. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, MCQs, to do what? To help you understand this concept better. Whether you're studying for your CPA exam, accounting courses, enrolled agent, or some other professional certification, invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.